Happy New Year and welcome to Fremont Community Church Online. My name is Eugenia. I'm the Children's Director here at FCC. We're happy to have you joining us our online gathering this morning, and we want to connect with you. We'll be resuming our in-person gathering next week, but you can also visit us at our website, fremont.church. Our gathering today will have some familiar elements of our in-person gatherings mixed with shorter time worship reflection as we welcome New Year 2023. Tearing down the lies that I believed Breaking through the selfish parts of me Truth has come and set this captive free Your love has opened up my eyes to see Jesus, I'm yours Forever I surrender all my heart I see it now, you love me from the start I won't forget the faithful God you are I'm confident, I'm covered in your grace Upon grace, upon grace You cover us with grace Upon grace, upon grace You wash away my guilt and make me clean Revealing what you meant for me to be Mercy wrecked my heart, now I can see Your love restoring every part of me Jesus, I'm yours Forever I surrender all my heart I see you now, you love me from the start I won't forget the faithful God you are I'm confident I'm covered in your grace Upon grace, upon grace You cover us with grace Upon grace, upon grace Can't get enough of grace Upon grace, upon grace You cover us with grace Upon grace, upon grace Grace in the driest desert, grace when I'm feeling worn, grace when I don't believe it, grace found at every turn, grace in the deepest valley, grace when the night is long, grace found in every season, grace has the final word. Grace breaks the power of darkness, grace mends the wounded soul. Grace moving every mountain, grace fills the deepest void. Grace overtakes my battles, grace resurrects these bones. Grace lifts me from the ashes, grace is my victory song of grace. Upon grace, upon grace, you cover us with grace. Upon grace, upon grace, can't get enough of grace. Upon grace. Upon grace, you cover us with grace. Upon grace, upon grace. Hi, I'm Will, the associate minister here at Fremont Community Church, and uh, I'd just like to share a little bit about Discipleship Pathway with you, our upcoming series. Last year, we introduced some of you to it. And this year, we really want to make sure that we're taking the time so that everyone has the opportunity to understand it better, because this is the the direction we know that God is leading us. You know, in Matthew 28, Jesus gives us the Great Commission, you know, to go make disciples of all nations. I've been following the Lord for decades. You know, I've heard all the sermons and read books and gone to conferences, and I don't know if the how in making disciples... Uh, if those waters have gotten clearer for me or maybe a little bit more muddied uh, until Discipleship Pathway. So Discipleship Pathway just put things in a language for me that made the Great Commission accessible. It made it doable for me. It was eye-opening. 
Um, and Jesus role modeled this with his disciples. And we know that when you are doing what you were created to do, um, that it's life-giving, that it gives hope, direction, purpose. So if you'd like to get involved with where we're going with Discipleship Pathway, you can join us online or in person for the duration of the series. And we also um, have a lot of great things coming up for our Elevate After School Enrichment Program and our preschool ministry. So if you want to find out more information about that, you can check out our website at fremont.church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for every gift that you give us, Father God, from every breath to the rain, um, from every morning, Father God, um, to the way that you watch us when we sleep, Father. We just, um, we're amazed at your love for us, Father. You give us this new year, Father, and we pray that this year um, that we would hold true to our commitments that we make to one another and that we make to you, Father God, that we would take whatever steps possible to be molded more and more into the shape of your son, Jesus. Father, we just thank you so much for this time and for being with us. And uh, we just give thanks for all things in your name. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's never let me down He's faithful through generations so why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. Cause I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength Cause I've built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful in every season So why would He fail now? He won't He won't fail. He won't fail. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? on you and I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it through rain came wind blew but my house was built on you and I'm safe with you Yes, I'm gonna make it through 
Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? He won't He won't He won't fail He won't fail Hello, Fremont Community Church, and Happy New Year. 2023 is here, which sounds absolutely crazy to say. Um, we are not in person this New Year's Day, and, and you've probably heard already why it's such a great day for us to start our new year thinking about what God is doing uh, outside the walls of the church. And this year we want to be a year of catalyst for mission at Fremont Community Church. And so uh, we hope that you've carved us uh, some time today to be with friends, neighbors, be uh, amongst people, uh, praying and, and, and building community and, and wondering what, what God is doing in, in these relationships that, uh, that he's called you to. And so today, that's what I'm gonna be talking about a little bit, um, about what's coming up this year. And I wanted to share with you some, some scripture that's gonna help us uh, just cast some vision for this new year. This is a day where people usually make uh, New Year's resolutions, and uh, and I've always been a New Year's resolution person. I think it's great to to set some goals and to to decide what what does it look like to be the best version of myself this year. And uh, you know, I did did some searching to see what what are the most common New Year's resolutions, and they're they're not surprising. They're things like uh, people say, "I want to live healthier." Um, I, I want personal improvement or personal happiness this year. Um, I want to lose weight or I want to advance in my career. And the thing about those things is they're great. They're fine, right? But they're not really very specific and, and they, they don't really require any action necessarily. Uh, they certainly do to achieve those goals, but, but those goals are just general, right? I want to live healthier. Well, what does that mean? And so as, as we talk today about setting maybe some, some different kinds of New Year's resolutions, I want us to set some things that actually are actionable. What steps can I take this year to, to be more that person that I want to be? You know, these things are a good thing, but what if there's some different resolutions uh, this year that God wants us to make? What if the, these general live healthier, be happier things uh, aren't actually going to lead us to lasting contentment? Uh, I want to make the case today that maybe God has a different thing in mind for us in 2023. You know, I want to look at this, this um, passage in, in the book of Mark, in, in Mark chapter 8. And Mark chapter 8 is one of the most dense chapters in all of the Bible. In, in this chapter of the Bible, Mark talks about how Jesus feeds 4,000 people. He talks about how he heals a blind man. He teaches a lot of hard truths. And then he comes to these, this very important section where he's talking about who he is and what he came here to do. And he asks Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah. And Jesus tells him, don't tell anybody because he's not ready for that, that info to really get out to everybody. But, but I want to hone in on that word for a minute, Messiah. You know, oftentimes this word is, is uh, looked at almost as, as a synonym for Savior. Um, and it is true that the Messiah is a Savior, but Messiah means so much more than simply Savior. You know, it's, it's a term that would have been associated with King David of the Old Testament. And the best, the best way to define Messiah is anointed king. Anointed as in empowered by God to do something really important, really special. And king, ruler, right? The one with the authority. The anointed king is what Jesus is saying he is. But then immediately after 
this this information is is spoken. He does this thing where he talks about where what the the anointed king, what this Messiah is going to do, and it's totally the opposite of what anyone would have expected. And so this is in Mark chapter eight, and we're going to get to verse thirty four in a second. Jesus is saying the Messiah. What's the Messiah going to do? He's going to suffer. He's going to be persecuted. He's going to be killed. Instead of the Messiah, this anointed king, coming as a victor on a white horse with a sword to conquer the enemies of the kingdom, he says, no, the the Messiah is going to the cross. The anointed king is going to sacrificially give his life. Okay, that's the setup for these verses. And then these verses are going to be our, our launching into the new year. So look with me to Mark 8, verse 34. Speaking of Jesus, it says, Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. So Jesus, he says, I'm the King. I'm the Messiah. I'm the anointed King. And I'm headed to the cross. And what does the path of discipleship look like? Well, it looks like following in my footsteps. It looks like heading toward the cross. And as he's saying here, everybody who wants to follow me has to become a martyr for their faith. Does everybody have to die a horrific death like I'm going to? No, not necessarily. Some would. Um, many, many do. Uh, many Christians all over the world suffer greatly for their faith, even some to the point of death. But that's not the fate of every believer, obviously. The, the crux of this passage is this, this verse 35, and this is what I want to hone in on today. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Jesus is telling us here where true life is found. Where true life is found. This word life, it's important that we understand it because it means more than just our our physical life. It means our very soul. It means our self. If we want to find our self, if we truly want to find who we were meant to be, if we truly want to find abundant life that comes through God, what do we do? Well, we lose ourselves. We, we, We set aside our lives and we chase after Jesus. John Stott, who was once uh, called the evangelical pope because of his amazing influence uh, on the church, he he said this about this passage. Stott paraphrases this. He says, if you insist on holding on to yourself and on living for yourself and refuse to let yourself go, you will lose yourself. But if you are willing to give yourself away in love, then... At the moment of complete abandon, when you imagine that everything is lost, the miracle takes place and you find yourself and your freedom. I love that. You find yourself and your freedom. Jesus' path to the cross, he didn't die just for the sake of dying, right? He died to sacrificially demonstrate the love of God that we might have forgiveness of sins and have peace with God. The cross is all about sacrificial love. And when he tells us to carry our cross and follow him, he's saying, do what I do. Love others sacrificially. Don't try to shape this life uh, to serve yourself. Don't look to only your self-interest. Don't try to hold on to control of your life. Give it away. And in giving it away, you find what it means to be truly alive. One of the most powerful conversations I've ever had about this was with um, some, some high school students. And we were on a missions trip together and we were having an amazing time and they were connecting with Jesus in ways that they had never connected with Jesus before. And they, they felt something different that they'd never experienced. And, and they came to me one night and they just said, hey, I don't, 
I don't normally experience God's presence like I am on this trip. Something has been awakened in me, and I'm afraid when we go back, it's going to go away. I don't want to lose it. And, and this led to a really great conversation, and, and I kind of was like, well, hey, guys, let's think about this, right? What have you been doing this week that you don't normally do? Well, I'm spending 24 hours a day with these brothers and sisters in Christ, having amazing conversations, meals together. We just have this sense of community, right? There's so much power in, in living life together. The, the, the Christian faith is not meant to be individualistic. We share our lives with one another, and in doing so, we enrich each other's lives. The other thing that, that we're doing is we're, we're, we're taking risks for our faith that we normally don't take. We're doing things that are out of our comfort zone, and that's making us have to pray and pray and pray. And, and I loved that they were able to recognize that that the, the time that they were spending in prayer was opening up their eyes to, to, to God's presence in their life that, that you know, maybe they would miss. And, and the taking of risks for their faith, wow. Uh, doors were open that, that weren't open before. And they were feeling the sense of aliveness. That's the way they put it, aliveness. And then the last thing that, that, that they, they were kind of like, I, and what we're doing matters. There's something about what we're doing here this week that matters. That's not about, you know, the mundane routines of life. It's not about accomplishing something. It's not about, you know, having a, a, a number attached to my performance like at school or achieving something. It, it matters. They, they kind of honed in on the fact that what we were doing that week would matter for all of eternity. You know, if Jesus was really in this, if he was in the work of actually impacting the lives of the people we were there to serve and love and, and to be served by and be loved by, that this, this doesn't end when this trip is over and it doesn't even end when this life is over. We're investing in eternal things. And there's something that's just so much more satisfying about that than the day-to-day -day stuff. It was in this community. And it was in this, this risk-taking, and it was in this prayer, and it was in this investing in eternal things that they were feeling more abundantly alive than they'd ever felt before. And so I break it down this way. When we're thinking about what this year could be about, I want to say, what if this year was about sacrificial love? What if, if we chase down sacrificial love, if we give ourselves away for the sake of others? And in the process, here's what I think we're going to find. We're going to find a sense of purpose. You know, we, we have, in many ways, lives stacked around routine, um, and it's, you know, usually around jobs or school, and then we try to fill in the other stuff with good things, but, but our lives are usually driven by a calendar, uh, and, and much, much of that stuff maybe doesn't feel like it matters for eternity. And that's not a bad thing. It's, it, there's ways to find purpose within that. But the sense of giving ourselves away to, to make our goals this year about serving and loving others, that, that can make all of it feel much more rich. Because then we look at every context we find ourselves in, whether it be work or school, family life, our neighborhood, our extracurriculars, our hobbies. All of a sudden, these are places where we open up our eyes and say, what if Jesus has a purpose for me being here? What if there's something that he's doing here that he wants me to join in? Uh, the next thing that happens when we give ourselves away is we have a sense of peace. And that doesn't make sense. It's a peace that, that doesn't really uh, seem to make sense because our world tells us to chase after all of these things and it promises us peace. And it's promises that never deliver. And yet somehow when we give ourselves away, when we serve others, when we find that sense of purpose, we are at peace. And it's because we're doing exactly what we were created to do. We are reflecting the love of God to the world around us. Peace comes from that. It does. And it, it may not make sense because instead of chasing after our own peace, we're just giving ourselves away. But I, I want to ask you to take some risks for your faith this year. And, and, I, and I believe that it will help bring a sense of peace into your life. The last thing that, that this will bring to, to live a life of giving yourself away, to make resolutions that are about giving yourself away this year, what we find, and it's what brings us the peace and what brings us the purpose, what we find most of all is the presence of God. And this shouldn't be a shocker. This is one of the things that I loved in that conversation with those high schoolers was I'm experiencing the presence of Jesus in ways that I haven't before. And we were able to 
to dig into that a little bit and go, you know what? I think it's because we're doing exactly what he would be doing this week. We've made our life this week about the things that Jesus made his whole life about, about serving, about bringing healing, about relationship, putting others before ourselves. That's what he, that's what he does. That's what he's all about. So the fact that we meet with Jesus in these moments of, of self-sacrifice, of, of loving sacrifice, is not a shocker. We find him there because that's where he is. That's where he's always at work. And so if you want a greater sense of the presence of Christ in your life this year, I want to encourage you. Take these words to heart. Let me read the, the, the passage one more time. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. And I want that. I want true life. I want abundant life. There's all sorts of fake ways to peace. There are so many things that, out, uh, that are out there that are going to promise things that they can't deliver. Here's three ways to live your best life. Or here's how to be the best version of yourself in 2023. And honestly, I don't think any of those things actually deliver any sort of lasting, meaningful happiness or, or joy. I think the only thing that leads to something that lasts is exactly what Jesus is saying here being willing to follow in his footsteps and give ourselves away. So I, I want to share with you three things uh, that, that can help you maybe set some resolutions that are focused on giving yourself away. The first one is resolve to participate in Discipleship Pathway. And Discipleship Pathway is going to be uh, done in our weekend services. Um, this is a, 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 a learning community that we've put together um, to help people learn how they can live on mission, how they can be looking to give themselves away for the sake of blessing others. And so we're going to adapt it from this learning community to being a part of our weekend service starting January 15th. And so I would just encourage you, make it a priority this year to, to participate in every one of those services, either in person or online. And if you've gone through it already, I've gone through it multiple times and it just keeps getting better. So it's, it'll be a lot of repeat, but God is going to show you new things as you go through Discipleship Pathway again. So that's the first one, Discipleship Pathway. The second one is resolve to pray. If we want to see true and abundant life, we cannot manufacture that on our own. It only comes from being close with Jesus. Set some resolution this year that's going to help you organize a prayer life that is vibrant, that is consistent. And the third thing I would say is figure out some practices, practices that you can commit to. It's one thing to have an aspiration of, I want to be closer with Jesus this year. It's another thing to, to plot out steps. Well, I want to be closest to, closer to Jesus this year. Well, what might that look like? Well, I want to set a goal of 100 prayer walks this year. I want to prayer walk my neighborhood or workplace, or school, a hundred times this year. That's something you can do, and I promise you, as you do it, Jesus will draw close to you during that time. He is going to show you uh, new and exciting things about your faith that maybe you hadn't discovered yet. You know, and so think about what are those things, what are those tangible steps I can take, whether it be, you know, prayer walking or serving in a ministry here at FCC that's already outward facing like ESL or Elevate or, or Youth Ministry or Compassion Network, but finding a tangible next step so that it's not just a dream, it can become a reality as you make a resolution. And so that's, again, why we don't have in-person service today, because we want to start our new year with our eyes out there. What if the most exciting thing that happens in the life of Fremont Community Church in 2023 is not something that happens in this building? That's what I'm praying for because I believe that Jesus is at work in our community doing powerful things and he's inviting us. Come on, you want to live abundant life? Come on, join me. Let me show you my power. Let me show you the love I have for those who, who are far from me now. So let's commit to that together. Let's open up our eyes to see what Jesus is doing and join in there. Happy New Year. It's such a blessing to be a part of this church family. And I cannot wait to see what God does in and through us in 2023. This is my worship. This is my offering In every moment 
I withhold nothing. I'm learning to trust you, even when I can't see it. And even in suffering, I have to believe it. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. And if you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. I don't want to follow my own way. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, lead me. It felt like a burden, but once I could grasp it, you took me further, further than I was asking. And simply to see you is worth it all. My life is an altar. Let your fire fall. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Teach me to follow in your way. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, lead me. Spirit. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Teach me how to follow in your way. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, lead me. Thank you for joining us. If you're in need of prayer, you can contact us online at fremont.church. We'd also like to remind you to look for opportunities this new year to bless your friends, family members, neighbors, and co-workers. If you've been blessed by our online ministry, we ask that you share this video with a friend, family member, neighbor, or co-worker that you feel would be blessed by this as well. We live stream our services every Sunday and post content throughout the week, and this is an incredibly simple way that you can live life as a digital missionary. Thank you so much for joining us, and Happy New Year!